Welcome back to another Disney Infinity 3.0 tutorial. Right, I'm just going to show you what we're going to try and do in this clip so you'll actually see it's working. What you'll see I've got here is I've got a pressure plaid. I'm going to press on that. It tells me that I don't have the generators working to fire the laser cannons. So, I need to go and get some power. So I'm going to go and collect these three battery cells. Right, and as soon as I collect all three, you'll see a count up. Dun -dun -dun. I get my three power cells. My generators are now powered. I'm now going to run back to my button, which will now mean I can fire my laser cannon. So if I stand on there, the laser cannon will fire. <laughs> it looks dead cool. Okay, quite pleased with this one. So it looks really good. And we'll have the explosion killing whoever is attacking us. And it's on a repeat charge while I step on it. Now, as soon as I step off, it stops firing. So what I've got here is if I pick up a rock, and try and throw the flipping thing onto it, which is never easy. Can't do it. Oh, I nearly had it there. Let's just drop it down. There we go. Push it across a little bit. That's it, it's going down. So now the rock is firing, and we now have our laser effect on the screen. So what we're gonna do now is uh, show you how I built that effect. So I'm just gonna go to my toys, I uh, go back to my filtered and if I just go to my creativity toys and just one below that where we've got our gameplay toys there is a tool here which is like a it looks like a battery from Guardian the Galaxy place out. I'm just going to put these three objects here and they're loads of different types but what we're going to do is we've got three little objects I want the user to collect. Now the tool I'm also going to need is a counter because I need to count how many times I've caught these objects. So I'm going to put a little button on here and I'll have my counter set and when that counter reaches three I'm now going to go to my uh, origin toys and go to the um, rise against the empire and I'm going to bring in my generator so let's get this first step done which is quite easy so these three pickup components as soon as I collect them so as soon as I if I go into that item press the square bar new logic connection when I actually shoot it or collect it or break it I want you to increase the counter by one, so let's increase that counter by one. Okay, now this bit's the easy bit, so it's nice and easy. So this one here, this is purely for effect. So on here, when you do the other one, can you, uh, when you collect this one, and can you increase the uh, counter by one? And I'm same again with the last one. So when you break that or collect it, so new logic connection, broken or collected, press the square button on there, and then what I like to do there is I would like to increment that by one. Now once that's incremented by one, what I'm going to do here is then go to the properties of the counter. Right? And I'm going to say new logic connection. When I reach that target, can you start the generator? And the generator will start up. Uh, all I need to do now is on the counter go to the property section and make sure I set it to count three. So I've got to collect at least three of these items. And I could have this generator run for a few minutes if I wanted to, or 30 seconds, but that now powers up the generator. So that's just purely for the effect of us using a collection process of collecting items to make something happen. I don't think I've used it yet that in any of my clips. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my creativity toys and I'm going to bring in something which is slightly a bit weird. I'm going to use in a, a logic gate. So let's me bring this logic gate in. Hold on. Uh, make sure I go the right way. Where is it? Da -da. Here we go. Now, with logic gates, what they do is they are permanently open. So whenever you start level, they are always switched on. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to put this logic gate connected here. And what I'm going to actually have is that as that gate is open, I want the reverse to happen. When that door is closed, then we know the generator is working. So let me just bring in a, a connection here. So we're saying, right, once I've got the target reach, can we close the gate? And like I say, all logic gates, when you load up a level, are switched open. So the only way I know that we've actually got the generator working is if that gate is closed. That's the logic part, yeah? So what I do is, if I go in and get a pressure pad, so let's bring one of these pressure pads in. I'm just going to move that across. Let's chuck that out there. Okay. And on that pressure pad, when we press that, um, we're going to get the same message. I'll use this stone for a bit later, as you saw in the beginning clip. 
So let's also then go back up and let's get my text, which I don't think I've used this yet in any of my clips. So let's put a text tool here and to guide the user. Okay. So recapping again, yeah, logic gates are always open. So therefore, when I press this button, if I haven't clicked the pieces, so when I activate that button, that's the property, can I send a signal to the logic gate? Yeah, can you send in an input signal? Okay, so I'm going to go down and put an input signal in. Now, on that scenario, if that gate is open, it means we haven't generated the door. So therefore, new logic connection on the logic gate. If there is an output, we know we haven't powered it up. So let's go to the text message and display message one. Okay, and let's configure this message. Now, when I've done messages, I've played around with different times, and you can have them time up for 30 seconds. You can just set your time uh, screen up. So I'm just going to go to the properties of the text box one, and I'm just going to change that now to say uh, you need to power the generator. Okay, but what I found was if I put five seconds or four seconds, when different people play the level, some read it quicker than others. I didn't realize there was a message or missed the point or were distracted. So the option I intend to use now with all my text messages is a confirmation. And what that basically does is the user cannot proceed until they confirm they've read the message. Okay, so if I go and test that for us now, as we walk over, yeah, we press that button, it comes up and says, right, you need to power generator. Can't do anything, can't move, can't do anything until I press X to continue. And that means any abilities people playing the game will be able to read that and understand what they've done. So now, before I put in all the other uh, tools and components we need, let's bring in the objects of the laser cannon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to decorations and I'm going to go and choose that fancy terrain. And the one I actually want is number four, which is for the uh, laser cannon. And I've just twisted that round. I'm just going to bring this here. So this is the laser cannon. And I've shown another video clip how to do this. So now I've bring, brought in the tree, you go, that's not laser cannon. If I now point to the tree, because it's the fantasy landscape, if I now use my palette tool, I can change it to whichever terrain I want. As you'll see, I've got the Hoth terrain, and for landscape five, it will put in a, a laser cannon. And I say, I've done another clip showing you how to use the different types of landscapes and terrains. So um, have a look out for that on, uh, on my uh, channel. So what we're also going to do now is need a few other little tools. So let's go back to our creativity toys. Let's choose the basic ones first. So what we're going to do is the first one we come across is going to be, let's have a look, uh, the path creator. Let's create this one. This is where the beam of laser is going to fire through. Now I can't get it to line up exactly and as it happens quickly you don't tend to notice. So I'm just going to place that there. And I'm now going to draw a distance of how I want my laser beam to fly along the line trying to keep it as straight as possible. So I want a reasonable length of distance on the screen. So I'm just going to place that into the ground. So the laser beam is going to fire there down on the ground and shoot at the base. Alright, so now I've got that, I need my locators. Now I need three effects for my locators. Now this one, I'm going to keep away from the path tool. So I'm just going to click this here. We're going to move it later. You'll understand why, just so it gets very uh, close together. And I'm going to put this one above. So you see, I just can get it. I can get it just above the path tool. And the third one, we're going to float over here, but that's the one we're actually going to attach to the path. But while I need to be able to point to it without getting mixed up, I'm going to keep it to one side. Right, so let's now bring in the other tools that we're going to need. So they're all the objects we need to control. So let's go across. The first thing that we're going to need is a repeater because I want the laser beam while it's pressed to keep on firing it through. So it's not that one, it's the repeater. So bring the repeater and I'm going to bring this down here. So bring it down. So that's going to fire a repeater on the screen. So I'm going to drop that in, that's fine. Once that repeats, that is going to then create an effect. The first effect is going to be like a, a glow around the cannon, like it's charging up. So in this case, I need my effects generator, and that's going to do on the first one, which is the one I put above the cannon, and that gives me a glow. The second one is going to be like the pulse, the thing actually flying. So that's the one traveling on the path. And the final one is going to be the explosion. So I need three effects generators there on the screen. Now the last one, which is the explosion, is a delay when it's fired. So I'm going to go to my time delayer, and I'm going to put a little pause between when the first two occur. 
and I've staggered them that way so you can see how they are, they are linked together. Okay, so if I go to the pro uh, properties of my repeater, what I'm going to do there, go to the property section, I'm going to change that to uh, every four seconds, yeah, because uh, I needed a length enough time to fire through, so every four seconds that will fire. So let's go back to our gate. Now, when we fire a signal through there, if that gate is locked, you'll now see that I can see when the input is blocked. That means we pick the batteries up so we can start our repeater. So I'm going to click onto there, and can you switch that on? Now, every four seconds, that's going to fire a sequence through. Okay, so what I do is I go back onto that repeater and say, right, let's go to New Logic Connection. When that repeats, so after every four seconds, can you trigger the first effect. So what I do is can you play once uh, and I want an explosion and I want the green uh, the green energy explosion. Okay and like I said that is the effect to make it look like it's flaring up so if I don't do this and point it to a locator it's going to appear there so I'm going to right click on the item and go to the dot just above the cannon and I'm going to put that is where the effect is going to appear that gives me like a, a green glow. Now when I've triggered that event, so once I've got the green glow appearing first and it's, it's been triggered, so I'm going to do a new lo no logic connection. Once that's triggered, okay, I want to start the path. So I'm going to go to here and say, right, on my path tool, and it's very tricky to line this up, once you've gotten too close, that's why sometimes it's better to have them separated in this particular case. So I'm just going to try and get it so it does match. There you go. What I want to do is, when you trigger the first explosion, can we reset and start playing whatever's connected to that path, which means it will restart playing that particular tool. Okay. Still not finished. So we're still on the first effects tool. So again, another new logic connection with that effects tool. When that has been triggered, yeah, I now want you to fire the next one. So can you play once on this? Uh, and this one, you've played through these, you have to, look, have to look through them, but there's an impact one, and it's an energy impact, which is quite a good one. So I want that to fire any energy impact uh, effect. And I need to tell you where I want that effect to appear, and I want it to be linked to this locator. Right, and I can reach that, and that's where I want that effect to appear. But that locator needs to be traveling on this path tool. So I'm going to point to the locator, and I'm going to do new path connection, and I'm going to link it to this path if I can reconnect it again. Now as the path is on, as soon as I get it connected, it's going to start moving along the line. So I need, need to intercept it. So once I get it on, nearly there. There you go. If I now connect to there, a new new path, you now see the object moving along the line. So I now need to re-get that logic connector. And what I need to do there is I need to go to the properties of the item and go to the toy box path. Now I'm going to increase that to 300, so I'm going to change the speed, not to 3 but to 300. I want the explosion to go in the line of uh, the it's going in downward angle, and I want it to play and do once, so I don't want it to keep looping, just play on once. So that now has got the explosion traveling along the line, and when it gets to the end it will stop. So as you see it goes all the way to the end and it stops. Now that's where I wanted the explosion to appear, and I couldn't do it because that would be in the way. So what I need to do now, I need to go back to my other trigger. So when my second trigger has now shown up which gives you that forward explosion I would like you to fire the timer. Okay and I'm going to say on oh, start that timer off. Now that timer we're going to give it a, a one second delay but when that is complete yeah I want you to fire the last effect and I want you to play once and yes you've got it I've got my huge explosion that I like I want my huge explosion to occur. Okay, and if I just check my properties of my replay, I just double check it. I think it defaults to one second, which it does. Good. So, one thing I mustn't forget to do is link my effect. Where do I want the effect to appear? New logic connection. I need it to appear on the one that I've set to one side. So, move it all the way across and get my last one. Excellent. Now, now I've got those all connected up, I can now you move the final effects. So 
So if I go to my locator, I want to move that location to the center of the shot, which is there. And as you'll see, they lay over the top of each other. So you can't actually edit them once they're done. But that's now done, and they're now connected. Right, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to do a new logic connection on the button. When I deactivate the button, I want to stop the repeater. I do not want it to keep repeating through. That will actually switch the item off. So when I press that button, when I walk off it, it deactivates it, stop the repeater, and the cannon will now stop working. Okay, this will tell me I need the button on the screen. Uh, but the issue here I'm trying to show you is that when you come off, I want the actual object to occur so I've collected those particular items. So as you can see, I'm collecting those items on the screen. My generator is now powered up. I go to my unit, stand on it, and I press it fires and explodes down the screen. And it's on a repeat. Now I've also, if you go to the line tool, I could have speed up the explosion. So if you see my clip, my thing travels faster because I actually increased it on the path. But because I don't repeat at all, I can now get the user to grab objects in the game to throw onto the pressure pad so you can have three or four cannons exploding. I can never throw these objects. But you can also use the tool where you, um, you know when I show you the flyby, how to call in X-Wing support, that when that cannon explodes, anything in that area is also killed. As you can see, I can't put it on the button, so drop it on but you can add more to this but it's quite a cool effect and that will now constantly fire on our screen. I hope you like this, I hope you find it of use and add it to your toy box. I've now finished all the elements for my Hoth battle level so I'll get that finished and I'll post that up so you can see all the uh, elements I've done. Hope you enjoyed the clip and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.